AI generated images are here. Type a simple description of something you'd like to see and beautiful illustrations, sketches, or photographs pop up a few seconds later. By harnessing the power of machine learning, high-end graphics hardware is now capable of creating impressive, professional-grade artwork with minimal human input. But how could this affect video games? Modern titles are extremely art-intensive, requiring countless pieces of texture and concept art. If we could harness this tech, perhaps we could radically increase the speed and quality of asset generation. Plus, there are all kinds of interesting applications for this technology that may lie just around the corner. So in this video, we're going to explore AI image generation techniques, take a look at how they might slot into common game workflows, and even get an AI image generator running on a Windows laptop. Are computer imagined images the real deal? We're going to use the three leading AI generators, DALI 2, Stable Diffusion, and Midjourney for this video. All the AI generated artwork featured in this video, I created myself, either using a web portal or running directly on local hardware. At the moment, the way that you use AI image generators is through something called prompting. Essentially, you just write what you'd like the AI to generate, and it does its best to create it for you. Using DALI 2 here, the best way to prompt it seems to be to use a combination of a simple description, plus some sort of stylization or indication of how you'd like the image to look. Often attaching a lot of descriptors at the end of a prompt helps the AI to deliver a higher quality result. There's also another form of prompting that involves giving the software a base image to work with, along with a verbal prompt that essentially guides the software to create a new image. Right now, this is only available in Stable Diffusion. Like many other AI techniques, AI image generation works by sampling a large variety of inputs, in this case, databases of images, and comes up with parameters based on that work. In broad strokes, it's similar to the way that DLSS or XESS work, or other machine learning applications like the text generator GPT-3. The AI is essentially learning how to create art just like a real person might, but with superhuman versatility and speed. Conceptually, at least, AI art generation should be limited by its dataset, the collection of billions of images and keywords that it was trained on. In practice, there are so many inputs that these tools end up being very flexible and essentially encompass the entire range of human semantics. At their best, they demonstrate human-like creativity when subjected to complex or abstract prompts, as the AI has, in a sense, learned how we generally understand and categorize visual information. Plus, image generators produce outputs based on random seeds, meaning that the same set of keywords can produce different interesting new results each time you run it. I'm sure you'll agree that this is interesting stuff, but what are the implications for video games? As the video game industry matures, remasters are becoming ever more common, but older titles come saddled with technical baggage. Some problems are easy to overcome, but updating the source artwork, in particular the textures, used for those games often takes an enormous amount of effort and time. So it was no surprise that when AI upscaling techniques became popular starting around 2020, they immediately saw use across a wide variety of remastering efforts. Games like Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers Edition, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and the Definitive Edition Grand Theft Auto titles all used AI upscaling to mixed effect. AI upscaling works very well when working with relatively high quality source artwork with simpler kinds of detail. But current AI upscaling models really struggle with lower resolution art, producing artifact-ridden results. But what if we generated all new assets instead of merely trying to add detail? That's where AI image generation could come in. Just look at these examples from the Chrono Cross remaster. The original game's artwork is pretty low resolution and the AI upscaling work does a reasonable job but ends up looking a little bit messy. But if we feed the source imagery into Stable Diffusion and add appropriate prompt material, we can generate all new high quality artwork that maintains similar visual compositions. We can redraw this cave area with the same fungal shapes and rocks, just at a much higher level of fidelity. By modifying some parameters, we can generate something very close to the original, or pieces that rework the scene by reinterpreting certain areas, like the pathway near the center. The overworld map looks pretty mediocre in its AI upscaled state, lacking detail. It does seem to have a pretty strong sense of depth, so I decided to redraw it in the style of a 3D render. 
Our early results here aren't perfect, but again, we can easily redo complex artwork while keeping the structure and navigation of the area consistent with the original work. This tree background actually looks all right in its AI upscaled form. So here are a variety of approaches that we could take. We could redraw it like an oil painting at a significantly higher level of quality than the AI upscaled version, but with similar styling. We could make it look more like a photograph with beautiful bokeh blur. Or we could go for a simple 3D look and manually paint over additional detail ourselves later on. AI image generation is so versatile that we could really take it in any number of directions if we wanted. Texture work in fully 3D games are a good target as well. Resident Evil 4 runs on most modern platforms nowadays, but its sixth gen era texture work looks quite messy. Most of Resident Evil 4's texture work comes from sampled photographs, but it is generally quite low resolution. Modern games try to depict more complex details in texture work, so simply upscaling or upsampling the original textures doesn't work very well. Again, by using original texture assets as an input, we can generate high quality artwork with much more natural looking details. The software reinterprets the original work with our verbal prompt as a guide, producing high fidelity results in seconds. The new textures are a thematic match for the originals and have similar kinds of detail, but aren't just sharper versions of the original textures. Instead, these are fully redrawn and look quite natural, like a brand new texture asset that a human could have made. You could, of course, apply the same techniques to creating original assets for games. Provide a source image, like a photograph or illustration, and you could generate a new texture asset or piece of artwork for your game. Alternatively, you could just provide a prompt and allow the AI system to generate brand new art without an image to directly guide it. The possibilities here seem virtually endless. Asset creation in the game industry is a huge constraint on development resources, and these sorts of tools have the potential to massively speed up workflows. Stable diffusion seems potentially quite powerful for these sorts of applications, as you can easily queue up hundreds of images at once in your computer for free and cherry pick the best results. Stable Diffusion also has an option to generate tileable images, which should help with creating textures. DALI 2 and Midjourney also don't currently allow you to work from a specific source image, so trying to match a piece of existing art is much more challenging. I can see these tools being used earlier in the production process as well. During game development, studios need countless pieces of concept art. This artwork tends to guide the look of the game and provides reference for the game's models and textures. At the moment, this is done by skilled artists using digital tools, like graphics tablets, and is very labor intensive. But AI art tools are capable of generating artwork extremely quickly. Plug in a few parameters and you can easily generate hundreds of examples to work from. Characters, environments, surfaces, it's all trivial to generate with some decent prompting and a few moments of processing time. Key concept art techniques translate to these AI workflows too. A lot of concept art is made by looking at a 3D model or rough sketch and doing a paint over, which is when an artist draws detail on a simplified representation of a scene. By feeding the AI a base image to guide composition, we can do the exact same thing. We can provide it with a basic sketch, a 3D model, or even the simplest of basic compositional drawings. And it will work from that to create a high quality piece of concept art. Just block out the most basic visual shape, combine it with a verbal prompt, and you can get a great result that matches what you need from the composition. These are really impressive results, but current AI models are hardly infallible. Actually working out a coherent aesthetic across multiple pieces of artwork can be tricky, as even an identical set of descriptive keywords produce quite different results depending on what you ask it to depict. Different subject areas in commercial artwork tend to use different techniques, and this gets reflected in the AI outputs. To generate truly consistent looking imagery, you need to carefully engineer your prompts. And even still, getting something like what you're looking for will require some cherry picking. AI art does seem like a very useful tool, but it does have its limits at the moment. In the past, I've worked on a lot of digital art, as well as motion graphics that made heavy use of my own illustrations and graphic art. AI image generation tools seem uniquely well suited to this sort of work, as they require high volumes of artwork. You could also imagine a future AI technique that was capable of generating these results for the entire picture in real time. Right now, these techniques take seconds of processing, even on fast GPUs. 
but perhaps a combination of new hardware and optimization could produce results good enough for use at runtime. It's also very easy, of course, to simply take the generated images and plug them into conventional image editing programs to correct any mistakes or to add or remove elements. A few minor touch-ups can eliminate any distracting AI artifacts or errors. Keep in mind as well that future AI image generation software is likely to be even more impressive than this. While these aren't first generation projects exactly, research and product development in this field has been somewhat limited until recently. I would expect that a potential DALI 3 or Stabler Diffusion would deliver more compelling and consistent results. But clearly these products work well right now. So which is the best option at the moment? DALI 2 is very capable of interpreting abstract inputs and generating creative results. If you want to be specific, you can, but the AI often works perfectly well when given a vague prompt and left to its own devices. It's very creative. DALI 2 is able to associate and pull concepts together sensibly based on loose ideas and themes. It's also generally very good at creating coherent images. For instance, consistently generating humans that have the correct number of limbs and in the correct proportions. Stable diffusion tends to require much more hand-holding. At the moment, it can struggle to understand more general concepts, but if you feed it plenty of keywords, it can deliver very good results as well. The big advantage of stable diffusion is its image prompting mode, which is very powerful as we've seen already. And if you turn up the settings, you can get some extremely high quality results, probably the best of the current AI generators. As of writing this video, Stable Diffusion has only been out for about two weeks. So I expect that future Stable Diffusion integrations will be able to achieve better results still. Mid Journey is quite good at stylization, taking an existing concept and rendering it like a certain type of painting or illustration, for instance. It also produces very good content with simple prompts, but it's perhaps a little bit less creative as you can see when you ask it to imagine pixel counting. Midjourney also tends to exhibit more AI artifacts than the other two generators, and often has issues maintaining correct proportions. In terms of access, DALI 2 and Midjourney are both commercial and web-based, but have relatively slick web interfaces that are easy to use. DALI 2, unfortunately, has been invite only since its launch a few months ago, though you can apply to a waitlist if you like. Stable Diffusion, on the other hand, is totally free and open source. The real upside there is that Stable Diffusion can run on local hardware and can be integrated into existing workflows very easily. Now, this wouldn't be a Digital Foundry video without some performance analysis. DALI 2 is quite a bit faster than Midjourney, though as both run through web portals, your personal hardware doesn't matter. DALI 2 usually takes about 10 seconds for a basic image generation at the moment, while Midjourney takes a minute or so. Running Stable Diffusion on your own computer produces variable results, depending on your own hardware and the quality level of the output. At 512 by 512 resolution, with a low detail step count, it takes only three or four seconds to create an image on my laptop with a mobile RTX 3080. But ramp up the level of detail and increase the resolution, and each image takes 30 or 40 seconds to resolve. Using more advanced samplers can also drive up the generation time. There are many other implementations of Stable Diffusion available for download, some of which may differ significantly from the simple GUI version I have running here, though performance characteristics should be similar. To run Stable Diffusion properly, you'll need an NVIDIA GPU with as much VRAM as possible, from the 10 series or newer. With 8GB of VRAM on my mobile RTX 3080, I can generate images up to a maximum of just 640x640, 640 640, though of course you can AI upscale those images afterwards for a cleaner result. There are other ways to get Stable Diffusion up and running, including workarounds to get it running on AMD GPUs, as well as Apple Silicon-based Mac computers. But using a fast NVIDIA GPU is the most straightforward option at the moment. AI image generation is stunning technology. Type some words in and get a picture out. It's the stuff of science fiction, but it's here today and it works remarkably well. Use cases for this tech are abundant already, but I do feel like we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. High quality AI image generation has only been widely available for a very short period, and new and interesting integrations are popping up every day. Gaming in particular seems like an area with a lot of potential, 
especially as the technology becomes more broadly understood. The most significant barrier at this point is pricing. DALI 2 and Midjourney are fairly costly to use, and stable diffusion essentially demands a reasonably fast NVIDIA GPU if you want to run it locally. Getting a high quality image often requires discarding quite a few bad ones. So AI tools can be expensive, either in money or in time. Exactly how far will these tools go? For the last half decade or so, AI art was nothing more than an amusing novelty, producing crude and vague imagery with no commercial purpose. But in the last year, specifically the last four or so months, we've seen the release of several seriously high quality AI solutions. It remains to be seen whether AI inference for art will continue to progress at a rapid pace, or whether there may be unforeseen limits ahead. These tools also pose significant ethical questions. Obviously, AI image generation has the potential to displace large numbers of artists, and they're also unnervingly good at copying certain distinctive visual styles and that sometimes extends to certain picture elements as well. In my testing, once or twice I was able to spot a distinctive mark, like a logo or a signature, that the AI had partially replicated. Now many other AI systems gather data from copyrighted work, and those haven't generally fallen afoul of copyright law, but perhaps this is a special case. It's entirely possible, of course, to exclusively train an AI using licensed or public domain datasets for which copyright isn't an issue. These concerns are largely outside the scope of this video, but do deserve consideration. For now though, these image generators offer amazing results. This is a very exciting advancement in visual technology. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.